And there's a lot of fingers pointing in the direction of the Cleveland PD saying they simply dropped the ball in this case. What do you say? You know, hindsight's a gift, and certainly it's a privilege if you have it. Uh, but if I look back historically on what took place, I'm not prepared to say at this point that the men and women of the Cleveland Division of Police did anything wrong. Of course, we're in a review process. The mayor has appointed a commission to look at missing persons and sex crime investigations here in the city of Cleveland. And ultimately from that commission, we'll make some recommendations on what we could have done, perhaps should have done, and what we will do in the future. And I want to point to December 8, 2008. You have Gladys Wade who comes into the Cleveland PD. She charges Anthony Sowell with attempted rape and he's arrested, but he's let go. Are you saying you believed the word of an alleged, are you saying you believe the word of a convicted rapist rather than the alleged victim in this case? Well, I'm familiar with the investigation up to a point, but certainly I know that the officer who investigated this incident conducted interviews, took statements, presented the facts to the prosecutor who made a determination based on the evidence that was available at that time that no criminal charges would follow from that incident. Well, you, you say the, the detective in the case was aware that Anthony Sowell was a convicted rapist. I have the report by the detective in the case. Nowhere in there does it show any reference that he's a convicted rapist. And this is another piece of paper that shows that she went to the crime scene. It says, went crime scene. She somehow failed to miss the odor that the residents had been complaining about for two years. Well, I know that this particular detective was inside the home. In fact, was on the third floor where bodies were later, later found to be She was concealed. inside the home. Yes, the, the detective was inside the home, was on the third floor of the home. I also know that the suspect in this crime, in these crimes, lived a lifestyle that was below the radar. I know that sheriff's department detectives were on the front porch. I know that the mailman had been on that front porch every day for the previous five years. I know that people had picnics and cookouts in his suspect's backyard, and nowhere did anyone ever report odors coming from his home. Do you plan to hold anybody accountable in this case? Well, you know, we have here in the city of Cleveland, the mayor has appointed a commission but to look at... But that's looking forward, not well, backwards. Well, it's, it's also looking backwards as well, because what they're looking at is the vision of police, policies, procedures, and practices. But and do, not the Sowell investigation. Well, from this review done by this commission, We'll look at missing persons, look at our protocols, look at best practices, look at what's going on around the country, and make some recommendations on how we deal with this. Same thing is holding true with uh, sex crime investigations. Again, looking at best practice, looking at current protocols to ensure compliance and whether or not our protocols are actually being complied with. So failure to pick up the odor, the decision to release a convicted rapist in lieu of an alleged victim's statement, women na falling naked out of windows, and another woman coming forward in September of 09 charging so well with rape, taking 37 days before you arrest them. You find no fault with that. Well, the process doesn't move as quickly as we would like, but again, I know that statistically only one in four victims of sexual assault is actually going to come forward. But I also know that even though once they do but come they forward, do come forward, about 35% of those, about 35% of those during this process, because of the fear of stigmatization or victim, additional victimization will choose not to uh, cooperate. When we look back at the timelines and our inability to make contact with some of the victims, it led to, led to these problems. It's not that the victim was sitting there waiting. Some of the victims, of course, had addresses, phone numbers were unaccessible to the detectives. Uh, it's just something that we had to confront and deal with. Another issue that people point to that we've talked to is straight release, where criminals and serious suspects are put back on the street because of either the lack of resources, the lack of time, or the, or the lack of interest in pursuing these kinds of cases. What's your reaction to straight release? Are you in it's, favor of straight release? Straight release is a term that hasn't been used here in the city of Cleveland in more than a decade. What the Cleveland Division of Police does is no different than what the other police departments all across the country do. We will hold a suspect in custody for 24 hours, up to 48 hours to make a determination whether or not there's any evidence to proceed with the investigation. If not, we'll follow the law and we'll release. It's either charge or release. We'll release the suspect and continue the investigation. All of me present the facts to a prosecutor or grand jury seeking an indictment. And six more women die as the result of the fact that Anthony Sowell is released. Uh, that's what the evidence seems to indicate at this point. That's correct.